Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Igor Pech and I am Head of Education at InnoVex. I will be moderating today's webinar with the great company of amazing experts from Luna Labs, Supersonic and InnoVex. But before we start, uh, let me tell you a bit about a few organization moments and today's schedule. First of all, uh, after every talk, we will have a Q&A session where you can ask speakers any questions related to the topic. So ask, uh, to ask a question, type in YouTube chat and I will read out loud during the Q&A session. Uh, a few words about InnoX. InnoX is a global software development company. Uh, we create digital solutions powered by innovative technologies and incorporate emerging trends, help businesses transform and grow. We use modern and powerful technologies and Luna Playable uh, is one of them. Please meet Niall Jones, head of platform at Luna Labs. Uh, let's welcome Niall. Thanks for the uh, introduction, Igor, appreciate it. Um, I'm Niall, I'm the head of platform here at Luna Labs. Um, I've got some slides to go through. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the company, um, but I'll start off with a bit more of an introduction um, from myself. So, so as head of platform uh, at Luna, I've been working with some of our smaller and medium-sized developers to help us scale that our technology, Luna Playable and Luna Replay, to game studios and developers of all sizes. Um, we do this with great education, great docs, um, a, a best-in-class platform, uh, and giving you guys all of the tools that you need to be successful with our technology. Um, so what I'd like to do today is just talk you through um, Luna Labs, introduce you, you to the company, tell you a little bit about where we come from, what we're doing now, our aspirations for the future, and how we plan on helping you guys get the most out of your creatives. So let's talk a little bit about Luna. So we're a creative technology company, and our focus for the last 12 months has been very much playable and video ad creation. So we've been giving you the tools for the best part of two years now um, to create playable creatives in-house. And recently this year, we introduced Luna Replay, which is a revolutionary tool that allows you to create video ads very, very easily, more efficiently than ever before uh, in Unity in-house. Um, we were founded in October 2018, so just, just over two years ago now. And in that time, we've, we've grown to a team of 37 Lunarians, which is uh, a fun bit of Final Fantasy IV lore there. Uh, we, we flirted with the name Lunatics as well, but we, we landed on Lunarians in the end. We are headquartered in London. Um, we have offices in Belarus, Israel, Netherlands, and uh, more recently, the United States, with, with plans to sort of expand more, more east very, very soon in the future. So I think it's important to talk a little bit about our mission as a company, because I think it underpins every product we release, every feature that we write, every bug that we fix, and every engagement that we have with studios. And that mission is to unlock creativity in game studios, small all the way to the largest game studios in the world. And the way that we do that is we give game studios and developers the tools to build amazing creatives in-house with the skills that they already have. So I'm going to talk a lot about Luna Playable today. And Mike uh, is, is, uh, and Karen are also gonna talk about how they use Luna Playable and how you can use Luna Playable. Um, and I'm also gonna touch on replay as well. But the idea behind Luna is that you create the creatives yourself um, and then anyone within your team, be it a developer, a UA manager, everyone in between can collaborate. They can edit those playables, those videos, they can optimize them and manage them all in one super easy to use place. 
So let me just give you a little overview of the two products that Luna have built uh, so far. Um, the focus today is very much going to be on playable, um, which is the technology that allows you to build playables in-house. Um, but before we talk about playable, I'll just give you a very brief introduction into Luna Replay, which is a really exciting product that we launched this year. So Luna Replay um, allows you to uh, record a gameplay session once and then create an unlimited amount of videos from that gameplay session. So you have your game, uh, you, you implement our SDK in Unity, um, you tag all of your variables in game, characters, background colors, text, you name it, you can tag it and then uh, enable that for editing later. You record your gameplay session on a phone, on a computer, in the Unity editor, send that up to our platform. And then from there, anybody in your team can create an unlimited number of videos from that one gameplay session and upload them directly to any of the major ad networks. Um, so it's really cool. And it, it, it's a technology that, that hasn't really been seen before. And um, we're really excited to bring it to the market. And you know, hopefully we can do another webinar just like this one where we can talk to you in more detail about replay. But today, the star of the show is very much Luna Playable. So. Luna Playable um, was a very, very novel technology when it was introduced. And I, I, I suppose fundamentally what it allows you to do is create really high, high performance, um, lightweight HTML5 playables right inside of the Unity editor using the skills that you already have as, as Unity developers, using the assets that you've already created that your artists have already put together for your game. And in some cases, even reusing large parts of your game's code. Um, by using the Unity toolset and workflow, you can, uh, you can work a lot faster to create playables and then upload them directly to Playground, which is our web-based platform where you can manage and optimize those playables. And I'll talk in a little bit more detail later on about the power of Luna Playground and how that fits in with playable and some of the features that you have around managing and optimizing the creatives, not just creating them. So let's take a bit of a deeper dive into Luna Playable. So as, I, as I've alluded to, it's, um, it's a creation workflow. It starts with our Unity plugin. The Unity plugin um, is an easy to implement plugin that you can download from our website um, upon signing up for, for a free trial or uh, you know, signing up for one of our plans for, with Luna Playable. Um, implements directly into Unity. It's very easy to use. And this tool will allow you to take an existing scene within Unity it could be a scene within your game that already exists or a scene that you're building from scratch and then convert that into lightweight performant HTML5 that runs in your browser. So the idea with Luna Playable isn't to disrupt your workflow, it's to augment it. It's to make it more efficient. So we're, we're using the skills that you already have in-house, right? You don't have to go out and hire an HTML5 developer. You don't have to go and find um, a company that's willing to build a playable for you and pay them to do that. You can use your Unity developers that you already have in house to build playables for you right inside of Unity. And that actually comes with some interesting side benefits as well, like using the assets that you've already developed, using the animations that you've built within Unity, and using really powerful Unity features within your playables. Not only is this just a way to save time and be more efficient, it's tapping into the, the power and the, the sort of performance that comes with Unity and the Unity engine. But it doesn't just stop there at creation. We really care about managing and optimizing your creatives as well. I mean, it's a crucial part of that campaign life cycle. So what we enable you to do is take the playables that you've built in our technology in the plugin upload them to something that we call Luna Playground, which is our web-based platform. And in there, you can actually have any member of the team edit any, any part of the playable in the web. So we're reducing that reliance on the developer. If you need to edit a part of your playable, um, if you need to change a character, change the background color, maybe there's a bit of text that, ch that needs to change. Historically, you would need to go to a developer, um, maybe even an outside consultant and say, hey, we need this part of our playable changed. What we're allowing you to do is have anyone in your team do that right inside of a super easy to use web UI that we call Playground. So a really cool feature that we built this year um, that fits in alongside these things is Playable AI and Playable AI Plus. 
what this is in, in essence is a way to create self-optimizing playables, which again is a, a pretty novel concept. The way it works is you create your playable using Luna Playable. Um, you upload it to Playground where your whole team can edit, create unlimited variations, upload it to networks, export it. But you can also create what we call self-optimizing playable. And that will launch your playable to a network. So you just export one build, you upload it to a network. Um, we will automatically then in the back end in real time, change aspects of your playable without human intervention. So we can change the character. Uh, we can change the background color, the text, the, amount, the number of enemies, the number of levels. And we do this automatically. You set the parameters, you tell us what you want to change. And then we do that in real time automatically. And by listening to the events that come back to us from those user interactions of your playable, um, how many users are clicking this variation? How many folks are installing the app after seeing this variation with this different char character? We can sort of learn a lot about which playable works best, which variations are better than others, and um, what's the key to a, a really performant campaign. And that playable will optimize itself in real time. So it'll start to learn this play, this, this character works a lot better than this one. Let's use this going forward. And it doesn't just stop there. Like when you when you arrive at this, this campaign that performs really, really well, you can derive a lot of insights from that. You can say, okay, well, now we know when we build our next playable, we should be using character A instead of character B. The background color red works a lot better than blue. And this install CTA works really, really well. So not only is it a way to squeeze performance out of your existing campaigns, it's to help you learn and build better campaigns for the future. And finally, um, what, what we enable you to do via Luna Insights, which is our in-house analytics product, is understand how your creatives are performing in real time um, whenever you want to see how they're performing. So we have a, a really awesome UI that we present within Luna Playground called Insights. Um, it gives you really rich analytics that give you a picture at any given time, how your ad is performing, which variants within your playable are performing better than others, um, how that campaign sort of maps out over time, the, 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 the user interactions with that playable. You can get a really deep understanding of how people are interacting with your ads and how, and how they relate to real world outcomes in, in terms of installs and clicks. So we've put together a short video that explains, uh, hopefully in better, uh, better than I can sort of articulate how a product works. Um, and it, it gives you sort of an insight into Luna Playable and what you, what you can get out of it. So I'll just go ahead and play that for you now. Yeah, love that video. Um, hopefully that gave you a good idea um, of, of, of what it is that Luna Playable is capable of and the sort of value that you can derive from it. Um, I think it's a really nice little explainer video. So I think it's probably worth talking a little bit about what Luna's priorities are in 2021. Um, I, I like briefly touching on this just because it gives you a little flavor of what's in store for next year and, and, and you know, something to get excited about. And um, also 
I think it's I think it's important that we that we share with you uh, what we feel is important for the product and and um, how how we plan on taking it further. So um, we sort of split our responsibilities as a platform into three categories or three sections of the workflow. Um, we start with create, we move on to manage, and then we end up with optimize. So create or creation really uh, pertains to everything around the creation of the playable or the video. Um, I'll focus mainly on playables for the purposes of this session. So creation is uh, the plugin, it's the engine, uh, it's the technology that underpins the playable um, at runtime. Um, and there are a couple of things that are relevant to that, that creation stage. The first thing is developer experience, which is something that we take very seriously here at Luna. And creative experience relates to the way in which you use our product as a developer. Um, it's how easy it is to use. It's how easy it is to get started with it. The documentation education that's available to you um, in order for you to be self-reliant and self-sufficient. So developer experience has been um, a real focus for us, uh, you know, definitely in the last six months. Um, we've shipped a number of features in the plugin that have really been a step change in how developers use the plugin. Um, it's made the process of making a playable using Luna Playable a lot easier. Uh, we are now shipping best-in-class diagnosis and, and, and debug tools with, with our plugin. Um, and we're making it easier to identify on our side when you're having issues and then be proactive about it as well. Um, we're definitely extending this into 2021. Developer experience will always, always be a, a key focus for us. Um, we're always striving to make the tools a lot easier to use, you know, working with the developer, not against the developer. Um, and we hope uh, to ship some really, really cool debug tools and things that make it just a lot easier to get the most out of the plugin next year. The other thing is engine and API support. So we're constantly listening to the community and listening to our customers. Um, you know, around what features that they want to bring to the engine, what things in Unity that they want to use in the web, in the browser. And we're also take, you know, keeping our, our ear to the ground when it comes to the recent develop, developments in WebGL, the latest and greatest APIs, uh, and making sure that we support all of those things. So the performance, the, the creatives don't just look good, but they behave really well. They perform really nicely across a range of devices, all the way from Android devices that were made in, you know, 2008, to the latest and greatest iPhone 15 Pro X, you know. Um, so uh, that's that's super, super important to us. But moving on from creation, we're also uh, hyper-focused on how you manage and then optimize those creatives after you've built them. So playable AI was a recent innovation in this space, allowing you to uh, optimize um, your playables automatically without really having to touch a button. We take care of that. We do all the heavy lifting and make sure that your creatives and your campaigns perform really well. Um, in the future, we're doing a lot of work to make sure that we can ingest things like install data and custom events uh, and ingest that data to be able to make better decisions around what does a good performing creative look like. Um, so we really wanna give you guys a lot of control uh, and we, we want you to be able to tell us and provide the data to us that says, this is how my performance is, this is how my creative is performing, and this is how it works, and this is what success looks like to us. Um, so those are some of our big priorities for, for, for next year. So I think it's important to talk about pricing. Um, our pro we have a very, very uh, accessible a fair, reasonable pricing model. Um, we recently opened up Luna Playable to a much wider market. Um, historically, Luna Playable has only been available to larger game studios as an enterprise pricing model. Um, in November uh, this year, what we did is we introduced the starter and play pro plans, as well as a 30-day free trial that anybody can sign up for. So if you haven't already, I, I definitely implore you to go to lunalabs.io uh, sign up for our free trial where you can uh, you can try out the technology, you can download the plugin, you can even export a few playable builds. Um, and then in your own time, you can move to one of our Startor Pro plans. Super powerful, chock full of features, and you get full access to the Luna community, which is a great community of users who are all using Luna playable, Luna replay, and um, helping each other out.
And I, I'd be remiss if I did not talk about the Powered by Luna Playable competition. Um, we're super excited about this. Uh, this is an opportunity for anyone who signs up for, to, to Luna um, to win up to $10,000 in a Facebook ad campaign, Facebook ad credits, as well as some, some really cool other prizes as well. Um, and it's really simple to enter. Like the, the, the bar is not very high here. Like what you need to do is, is download our tools, uh, download our plugin, create a playable with Luna Playable. Um, which hopefully is a very easy process. I think it is. I think we have great documentation to help you get started and um, the wonderful Mike will be helping you out there as well. Um, but all you've got to do is create that playable, uh, upload it to Luna Playground, um, and then go to our community forum, which is available to all Luna customers, even free trials, and then post it there. Uh, we have a lot of details surrounding the competition on our website. So again, um, go to lunalabs.io and there is a big purple bar at the top of the site, can't miss it, where we tell you all about our competition. Um, so yeah, great opportunity to, to uh, use one of our playables, get the most out of the platform and actually see it in action, serving impressions and, and, and get a sense for the real value that we can deliver with, with playable and playground. So yeah, definitely sign up for that. And that's all I had. So um, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate it. and. Um, yeah, I hope you learn a little bit today about Playground, and I really look forward to, to hearing from Karen and uh, Mike as well. Thanks. Niall? Yep. Niall, thank you for a great presentation. Um, my pleasure. Yes. Uh, dear attenders, if you have any questions for Niall, please uh, type your question in the chat and uh, I read this question. And uh, currently we have uh, one question from Reo for Niall. Niall. Uh, could you answer one? Uh, the question is about, uh, can we use this playable creatives for our Facebook campaigns uh, for, to validate a concept or CTR? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in fact, we have a lot of customers today who use Luna Playable for concept testing. So not only is it a good tool just for user acquisition, it's also a great tool for figuring out, you know, what, what game mechanic works or what does a good game look like? And you can do that by creating hundreds of variations super, super easily using the tools that we, that we, that we give you. Um, you can create hundreds of variations of your game in minutes almost, and then upload them to ad networks like Facebook and get a real sense for uh, what performs better, you know, which of your assets is, is better received by the users or a certain group of users. Um, it's definitely a very valid use case of the technology and we've seen folks use it to, to great success. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for answering. Uh, also, we have one more question from uh, Deco Stair. Uh, question is about how Playable is related to Unity Dots. Yeah, so at the moment, we just, uh, we just support um, standard Unity. Um, uh, but, you know, Dots could, could certainly be in scope for next year. Um, as I alluded to before, we, we keep our ear to the ground with any developments in Unity. Um, in the world of game engines and HTML5 uh, games, so um, you know we'll certainly assess that when it comes when 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 it sort of comes to it. Um, I, I don't think there's a huge amount of information that we have around dots right now. I think what we have in the Unity engine that exists today is super powerful, and I think we're we're in a really good place just using that and leveraging the Unity engine, and we get a lot out of it. And uh, you know we see great performance and. Um, uh, we see things working really, really well in the browser. So unless we have reason to sort of support dots in the future, I think we're, we're good where we are for now, but it's definitely something that we're, we're looking at, yeah. Um, great, thanks for your answer. Um, my, uh, if, if you have any questions, please type in YouTube chat and we try for these questions later. Um, it's time to go ahead and move to our practical part because today we have a practical part with our expert from I Innovex. And um, 
Innovex is rapidly growing in gaming, as you know. Uh, we work with Iron Source, Zynga, Gem City, and we are ready to share expertise with you. Um, I, I'm, uh, I'm glad to present the next speaker of our webinar. Please meet Mike Silanin, software engineer and Unity developer at Innovex, who will provide a live session and create playable right now on live. Uh, you can repeat step-by-step -step tutorials with Mike or iterate the same at home because we uh, will add these outcomes and uh, links below this video and you can repeat uh, these tutorials later. Uh, you can find all the required assets by the link before this video. Please uh, see below the video. Um, if no, you can repeat as, uh, as I told later. Um, Please, Mike, your turn. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I have been mu muted. Um, Uh, I'm a software engineer in the in Innovex focused on uh, Unity development. And today we will speak about uh, Luna Game Engine, Luna Playable, Luna Playground, uh, and how we can create playable ads with Unity. <coughs> I will show you uh, how the Luna Game Engine actually works, uh, what is the underhood, um, and uh, how to create high quality, high performance playables uh, using uh, only Unity. Uh, before we start, uh, let's discuss a few organizational moments. Uh, we have a chat here and all the links, additional materials and so on, you can find here. Uh, so let's start. Um, what is the Luna technology and how it works under the hood? Uh, first and the most interesting thing uh, uh, that allows you to convert C Sharp to JavaScript uh, is a bridge net technology. It's an open source C Sharp compiler and framework. Um, if you heard nothing about, uh, about it before, uh, I'll, I'll recommend you to visit BridgeNet site um, and uh, even try some code using uh, 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 using DECnet. Uh, now I can share with you my screen. We have we have some problems with uh, with connection and demonstration. Currently, you can uh, type your questions in our chat, and our speakers will answer for your questions and consult you later. Uh, I think we need uh, a few moments, and after that, we continue our live recording session and uh, demonstrate all opportunities uh, via Luna Playable and share our Innovex expertise with you. 
Um, I read your questions and uh, now we have any question. Um, I also recommend you to follow on Facebook uh, our partners, Luna Labs, Iron Source, Supersonic, and uh, Innovex. Uh, in this social media, you can find many useful materials, announcements, promotions, and also you can find uh, more materials and information about uh, Luna Playable competition and uh, more details about free trial for Luna Playable. Uh, if you follow uh, our Facebook page Innovex, you can read more information about our new webinars, uh, sessions and information by our partners. Uh, we will share more with you. Please follow us. Uh, sorry, guys. Can, can yeah, you hear we continue. Me now? Please, Mike, continue. Mm, I'll have some issues with sharing my screen. Sorry. <laughs> uh, really sorry for that. Uh, so we uh, stopped on the DECnet. Uh, DECnet is an online tool where you can see uh, like the BridgeNet technology works. Uh, so you can type any code on, on C Sharp and get a JavaScript version very easily and right now. Uh, so you can try it, you can code everything. It's really very, very interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, now, um, it's... Uh, it's really very, uh, very interesting, but it's not enough, you can say. Uh, what about uh, Unity classes, uh, Unity API, and so on? Um, in fact, uh, Luna has its own Im implementation of um, all the parts of, of Unity APIs uh, and, and cover them all, almost completely. Uh, so. Each time when, when you compile your project in, in Luna, it goes through four stages, exporting assets, uh, compiling and, and compressing assets, uh, C-sharp to uh, a JavaScript code, code compiling, and processing uh, bundles uh, to HTML package. Uh, Unfortunately, we have no time to, uh, to, to describe uh, it more. Uh, so let's move next. Uh, <clears throat> let's have a little practice. Uh, for now, uh, you'll need to have a Luna playable plugin. Uh, for, this, um, for this purpose, um, uh, please visit the, the, the download page at Luna Playground website. And if you already have the, the downloaded plugin, uh, you'll need uh, just to open Unity, uh, create a new project. Uh, new sample project, we can call it uh, Luna sample. Uh, then, um, while while Unity is starting, uh, we can have a look at the change log of Lun Luna Playground. On the download page, uh, you can find the link of a change log. Mm. Uh, Uh, so here you can see that Luna usually has new 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 releases at least uh, twice a month, and each version has lots of uh, fixes, improvements, 
and also new features. Uh, step by step, guys trying to cover all the Unity AP APIs uh, and um, uh, even add uh, some popular plugins uh, as a part of, of internal API. For example, you can find that in version uh, one, uh, 100, uh, they, they integrated uh, a popular .twin plugin. Uh, so for now, you no, no more need to replace the LL by, by a source code. Um, and it's really great. So uh, we have our Unity project. Um, and for now, you need to, uh, to install a plugin. For this purpose, you can open a uh, window, package manager. Here, uh, you need a plus button. Uh, and here, you need to choose um, add a package from disk. So you need to uh, to navigate uh, to the Luna plugin folder. Uh, here you should to choose scripts and package JSON. It can take a while. And uh, Note here in a package manager, uh, you can remove all 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 unnecessary packages from from the uh, uh, the project. Um, so now we have we have installed Luna plugin, and now we can prepare our project for using Luna. Uh, first of all, you will need to go to the uh, build settings and ensure that you have added uh, your scene. Uh, what uh, what this mean? Uh, in in the most pure, uh, in the most cases in in real game projects, uh, you need to create a special scene for your playable and. Uh, Mm, you should add that, uh, that scene to the build settings. In our case, uh, we have on, only one scene, so let's move next. Uh, now you need uh, player settings. In the player settings, you must ensure if you use uh, a Unity version uh, less than 20, 2019, you, you must ensure you are using scri scripting, scripting runtime version uh, 4.0 or, or above. Uh, in my case, I don't need to do that. Um, the second scene, uh, we must ensure that we are using default rendering pipeline. Uh, <clears throat> uh, because for now, Luna doesn't su support uh, both uh, uh, um, uh, li lightweight rendering pipeline or, or universal rendering pipeline. Uh, so we can use only built-in pipeline. Uh, then, uh, now finally we can go to the Lun Luna playable settings. Uh, first time you you open you open the plugin, uh, you can see a window that uh, will require uh, your your login. 
uh, so and enter the same as as you used uh, in Luna Playground website. After that, uh, please uh, please navigate to the uh, settings basic and ensure that we have our scene here and uh, we have this scene as a startup scene. Well, uh, near we can see export type block. Uh, what this mean? Uh, you can see everything and selected items. Uh, first item, everything uh, means that uh, all, all the assets in your uh, project uh, will, will be included uh, to the build. Uh, the second one, uh, means that only items uh, that you choose will will be includes uh, to the build. For for example, now uh, when I choose uh, selected items and scenes, uh, it means that only the assets we are used in a current scene um, uh, will be uh, will be included to the build. Uh, great. Um, now we must ensure we have a property pass for our MS build. Uh, MS build uh, Luna used for um, uh, to uh, to compile the code packages in uh, some build stages. Uh, but sometimes uh, these paths are not not proper. Um, for for Windows, uh, this is usually uh, Microsoft Visual Studio folder, Microsoft Visual Studio version, community, MS build, uh, current bin, MS build exe. In Mac, it's always in mo Mono Framework folder. Uh, Awesome. For now, we can create something and uh, test uh, how Luna uh, can can compile our code. Uh, for that purpose, uh, we can create something uh, re really simple. For example, let's create some 3D objects, for example, cube. Uh, so, we have we have a cube here uh, we can make it a bit closer uh, we can add some some material on it material named cube uh, we can choose some shader for example, mobile vertex lead and choose some default texture. Uh, now we can add this material to our cube. And uh, for now, we can add some script on it. Let's add um, some script named simple notation. Let's open our code. Um, besides that, you mentioned uh, that I were uh, that uh, that I used uh, uh, a mobile shader on our cube. Uh, uh, get why? 
you can try to uh, type in in chat uh, what do you mean uh, what oh, what do you think about that and now we have opened project uh, we can do two, two default function here, uh, but we need only a uh, second update event function. <clears throat> and here we can add something very simple. Uh, it can be a serialized field, private, um, vector three. Uh, named rotation. And here uh, we can type some some code. Transform, rotate, our rotation and time delta time so now we can go to unity uh, put some values in our script for example something like that and now um, start project. As you can see, everything worked fine. Uh, so for now, we can try to uh, to compile it in in Luna. Uh, Please navigate to develop section. Uh, here, uh, here you can see uh, that you can build project and start a server. For now, we need to build project. It can take a while and uh, usually in some uh, really big projects with uh, um, a big number of, of assets, it can take a while, uh, but in our case, it uh, builds uh, rather quickly. So, uh, now we should start our server and have a look on the JavaScript build. Um, you can see here, then uh, we have in our browser uh, our our C Sharp Unity project that goes on Canvas tag and uh, scripts that you can see here in uh, in Sources panel. Uh, for example, uh, you can find that uh, that our class simple rotation uh, goes here. Uh, and you can have have a look uh, on on the our update function rotation variable uh, and find fi find everything here uh, <clears throat> uh, you can find here unity engine class it's its implementation of U Unity APIs by, by Luna. 
So, great. Uh, now we can do much uh, something uh, mu much interesting. Uh, so, uh, I hope uh, you all uh, get the, the assets uh, that uh, we send you by mail and that you can find uh, uh, near, near the YouTube uh, video. Uh, this is the assets uh, I specially prepare for this webinar. Uh, so please uh, open it. Uh, you will need to, to unpack these assets. And now uh, you, uh, you can create a new project or just replace uh, assets folder in current project uh, with, uh, with the contents of uh, this folder. For example, we can just replace, just replace uh, all assets in in our current project. Now go to Unity. Uh, while the assets are being in imported uh, a few words about the project uh, mainly it's based uh, on the sample assets by by unity um, uh, from from the unity asset store uh, but simplified a bit and uh, prepared for creating play playables uh, great now we have all the assets imported in our project uh, then you need to go to, uh, to the scenes folder and open the main scene. Now let's uh, start the project and uh, look at the gameplay. As you can see, it's a mm, simple first-person runner uh, that have a rather uh, fine gameplay, uh, good assets, uh, uh, 3D characters, and uh, a huge number of uh, meshes, textures, uh, materials, and so on. You can have a look uh, on these folders, models folder. Uh, you can see that uh, we have a lot of, um, a lot of meshes here, a lot of materials here, a lot of, yeah, a lot of animations for our characters. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> please have a look at the config file uh, that, uh, that is located in the root of the assets folder. Uh, it's a, uh, it's uh, just, uh, just a simple uh, scriptable object where you can find all the uh, settings and, and configurable values. Uh, for example, you can change uh, a character from cat to, to a raccoon uh, and start a project and see that uh, gameplay is changed. Uh, 
Uh, so it's a, a sim simple scriptable object. Uh, the the only difference make it special that it contains uh, a mm, uh, lo Luna Playground field attributes uh, on its variables. Uh, let's have a look on them. Let's open our code. You can find. Uh, config folder in our scripts and here you can find config uh, config preset uh, so as you can see uh, each variable here uh, have a luna playground uh, field attribute uh, that means that uh, the in the similar way uh, like we see it in unity editor uh, we can change everything di uh, directly at Luna Playground site uh, and create as many variables of our playable as we want. For example, uh, we can change play, uh, play duration of our game. Uh, we can change uh, setting use sound or don't use sound, uh, how coins are you need to win and so on. And also, you can create uh, any number of, of configurable variables, uh, getting as many variations of your playable as you want. And I think it's beautiful. Okay, uh, let's uh, uh, let's take take a look at the assets folder. Uh, we can see that uh, we have a lot of assets, really lots of assets. Uh, and uh, uh, but Luna can can easily handle it. Uh, now we we can see that that everything is looking rather easy. Uh, but the main thing uh, you must be focused on is a playable limitations and end optimizations for web, especially for some uh, ad networks. As, as you know, uh, uh, mo most of them limits uh, the size of a playable up to three megabytes or five megabytes. Uh, so. Uh, what can we do to make our playables really small? Actually, Luna, Luna developers uh, spends a lot of effort to make the final, uh, the final build optimized and, and adapted for the web uh, as much as possible. Uh, they provide web-friendly formats, um, uh, uh, special repacking techniques uh, to cut down the, the download size uh, speed up startup time uh, and and so on uh, but uh, really this is not enough uh, if you're not prepared your your assets properly uh, so what we can do actually a lot of uh, useful tips you can find in in luna playground documentation um, <clears throat> uh, i'll share with you a link Uh, and uh, besides that, uh, you you can find a very useful video about about optimizations uh, created by Luna Labs. You can find it in in Luna Labs YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe it too. It's very interesting. Now I share you the links. Mm 
Michael, I, I think we can add this link later. Yeah, sure. Well, let's continue. Uh, but now I I can share some uh, some optimization tips, uh, especially for me. Uh, the first tip, uh, only, only the, uh, the combination of uh, standard optimization techniques uh, that we use for uh, regular Unity projects and our games, um, and the combination of uh, special tips uh, from, from Luna, um, and um, the settings that we can provide through Luna, uh, Luna Playground UI. Um, <laughs> In our plugin, uh, can lead uh, to to good performance uh, and satisfactory size for our playables. Uh, so the next tip, uh, you should always optimize your meshes uh, if uh, you're working with 3D projects. Uh, optimize both meshes and 3D characters animations. For example. Uh, here, uh, we can find a lot of uh, uh, level meshes. Uh, you can select them all. Um, and you should ensure that you use uh, uh, mesh mesh compression um, and uh, especially I usually use high mesh compression. Uh, it's okay for all the type of uh, of the playables. <clears throat> then uh, we must ensure uh, that we use some useful settings in our Luna plugin. Uh, you can find in uh, settings tab uh, uh, in advanced uh, that um, we need comp uh, we need to enable compressor sources. Mm -hmm. Then we need uh, to ensure what settings uh, are we use uh, for each of our assets for meshes, animations, uh, fonts, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> Every time you work with playable, um, <clears throat> you, you'll need to, to optimize all, almost the uh, whole assets. Uh, you must optimize everything. For example, uh, for in in the most cases, we don't need to use uh, all the characters uh, for our fonts, uh, so we can easily replace it uh, only uh, with the chairs we are currently used in uh, our scene. For example, uh, here I used only these characters. And uh, we can easily replace here. Um, or even uh, use uh, uh, textures instead of fonts if you have only, for example, one or uh, two words in our game. For example, win and lose or uh, uh, some button text, uh, we can just use textures to, to optimize our build size, uh, then uh, we, can, we can optimize uh, sounds, uh, we can use mono for our playables uh, with a low bit rate, uh, uh, we can optimize the texture size. For example, even in this project, we can use uh, even uh, some size like that. Uh, we do not need a uh, big, uh, big texture set here. So uh, every time uh, when when you work with uh, playables, um, 
uh, you must uh, you must optimize as much as possible. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, sometimes you even need to seek a help of uh, 3D artists to optimize number of, of, of triangles for some meshes that are really heavy for, for web. But in most cases, uh, you'll just make a several simple things. Uh, for example, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, you can use a high, high mesh compression. Uh, you should use high mesh compression for uh, your characters too. And uh, using Luna tools, uh, you can optimize all the stuff in your project. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to uh, to consider all the optimization methods uh, uh, but uh, you should understand that only combination of usual uh, unity optimizations and uh, settings provided by by luna ui uh, you can get the excellent performance and build size results as a uh, um, <clears throat> in the assets section uh, you can find all of them uh, and please visit Luna, Luna documentation for better understanding. Um, so, if you keep all the assets properly, and uh, you can you can get a really great optimized playable in terms of both performance and size. Uh, so, I think for now that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my friends. I, I hope uh, you you enjoyed my video. Uh, maybe later uh, in future uh, we create uh, some uh, some more web webinars by Luna uh, and uh, share with you more tips. Uh, but for today, that's all. Thank you. Mike, uh, great, great thanks for this practical session. It was very useful. Uh, Luna Playable is a super, super powerful tool, as we know. And uh, we continue our webinar. And if you have any questions, please uh, type your question in our YouTube chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, we see your reactions. Yeah, great presentation, Mike. Okay. I hope you are well, uh, and we continue our webinar. Uh, I, as, as I mentioned, you uh, will see this recording later in our post-training feedback letter. Uh, you can find a link for this video and uh, other useful additional materials. And uh, it's a great pleasure. To, it's a great pleasure to collaborate with uh, World Now Company and world now leaders. And uh, Supersonic Studios is a mobile game studio, publisher and studio with headquartered in Tel Aviv. And Supersonic is a part of Iron Source Company. And it's a great pleasure for me and Dynovac, Innovax uh, to introduce Karen Levy, uh, Director of Creative at Supersonic Studios. And Karin will share tips and tricks uh, for making killer game creative use with Luna Playable. And uh, I think it will be a great case study from Karin. And uh, please meet Karin. Thank you, Igor. Um, it's a pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'll just share my screen. Yeah, all, all is good. Okay. So it's fine, you see my screen? Okay. Um, so hi everyone, I'm uh, really excited being here today. 
um, showing you a little bit about uh, our creative activity in Supersonic, talking a little bit about Iron Source and how we're using Luna uh, really to make uh, killer creatives in, at Supersonic. A little bit about myself. So my name is Karen Levy. Um, I am the director of creatives at Supersonic. Um, been working in Iron Source for almost uh, seven years in different uh, business in the mobile um, business positions in the mobile, uh, from user acquisition, monetization, performance, um, until I've shifted to the creative uh, zone, which uh, I am in love with. Um, and uh, right now leading the creative uh, team uh, in Supersonic. Okay, so what I'm going to introduce today, a little bit just the agenda. Uh, first of all, Queen Gambit is going to lead us uh, along the way as uh, I think uh, she's a queen in a lot of different things and, and also a lot of uh, thinking behind uh, creatives and, and products that we're using. Um, so we'll introduce the Supersonic and Iron Source, talk a little bit about the creative team, uh, user acquisition, which is just a, a, a part that we cannot ignore um, when working on uh, creatives in the mobile industry and gaming. Uh, playable production, uh, how Luna is, is uh, really blending into our in-house production uh, and teams and then talk about uh, success stories that we have with uh, the Luna platform that we're using to build uh, the playables. We, we will focus on playables only um, at this part, but of course, um, uh, as, you, as you heard, there is also the Lunar Replay, which is for video building that we're also using, but um, that would be for another session probably. Uh, so Supersonic is owned by, by Iron Source. Um, and uh, just a little bit about Iron Source that was established in 2010. Um, I think we're all already a bit above 900 employees um, and half of it is R&D employees. Uh, very focused on on tech, on on um, developing products, uh, really to have those uh, tools that will help us achieve our eventually business goals. You can see the spread globally uh, around the world, and where we have these cute crowns is where Supersonic is also um, existing and, and working in in those offices. Um, we are mostly bit, like the HQ is based in Tel Aviv. We do have a very big uh, office in Kiev, um, part of uh, in the Innovex and uh, Minsk in, uh, for Supersonic. In the last two years, um, Iron Source has been shown uh, as being the top uh, network in, uh, in, in what comes to quality and volume uh, in all the area of, of gaming. Um, this report is, is being published by AppsFlyer, okay, one of the biggest companies for tracking. Um, and in the last two years, we were really uh, the independent network, um, basically in the first place after Google and Facebook, which is a great achievement and really something that um, helped us uh, to achieve the place we are today and also build Supersonic um, in really uh, quick and, and fast pace. And uh, Supersonic uh, has been established at only this January, um, which is uh, amazing. Soon you'll see the amount of games that we have uh, published that reach the top, uh, the top charts. Uh, as I mentioned, HQ in Tel Aviv, it's an independent company, but is owned by Iron Source and mainly uh, providing um, a third-party publishing uh, solutions and also uh, in-house team for building uh, games. So really since January, um, we had around 20 games um, that, we, that we published and 16 of them uh, were in the top charts, which is a really big achievement and are continuing to drive installs and, and working uh, very hard on that. Um, and this is really what pushed us a lot to achieve the place where today um, 
reaching uh, in the top five publishing companies in the hypercasual uh, industry. A little bit about the creative team. So you can see there's uh, here a combination uh, in, in those nice days where we could uh, all uh, uh, visit um, offices. So we had like a really big visit from the guys in Kiev in our HQ here uh, and have a combination of uh, different, uh, uh, we call it squads, as you see, um, because this is our methodology of working in our creative team is we believe that we need to work in squads, combining different professionals in the same group in order to achieve better results at the end with our creatives, including um, data analysis, motion designers, engineers, game designers. Uh, you can see a really wide range of, of uh, different professionals in the team. Uh, to really achieve eventually an end goal uh, of uh, the best creatives for the best games. And a little bit about the user acquisition. As I said, uh, creatives are part of the user acquisition. We cannot ignore them. We cannot uh, uh, leave that aside and just make creatives as we need to understand that we have a performance goal um, of, of uh, really uh, providing creatives that will uh, perform, that will increase uh, the, the performance and help the game to be uh, a successful game. Um, and, and one of the things that in user acquisition we will want to achieve is really a competitive eCPM, which is a cost per mil. Um, and, and eCPM is, is actually your buying power in user acquisition. Um, with the ACPM, you can make your you can achieve uh, better results by making your game more market marketable, and uh, and by that uh, really achieve better results, better scale, more installs. The ACPM is combined with IPM and bid. We're not going to drill down into that too much, uh, but you can see that as long as we will focus on that, we have different zones. Um, of, of marketability uh, in different ranges of ECPM. Um, and, and if you look at the lower range of, of the ECPM, if we will be here and will not be able to achieve a high IPM, the game will not be mar marketability and, and we will not be able to scale. While if we will increase it, we will be in a zone where we will be able to scale. And if we reach the fun zone, then here we are able to even increase our profit as a game developer for the game and really achieve uh, amazing results with it. So to, to achieve that IPM, we need always to challenge our current creatives, okay? And always look to how are we scaling the IPM? How are we improving what we have right now? As this is like a very generic graph that uh, shows the situation, I think across all uh, creatives, across all games, once you have a creative that has been launched and improved the performance and you see really the scaling up the volumes uh, and, and really achieving a, um, good performance, at some point that creative will start fading and, 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 and uh, performance will start dropping. And that is the point where we need to create a new iteration, a new creative, something that will really help us to drive more uh, installs to keep the marketability of the game, to keep it uh, really on high volumes as much as we can. Uh, so it's new creatives, but also localizations, which are a very important part and can really boost uh, the performance of, of a game and the creatives. Um, a lot, especially in China and Germany. Um, and in general, new creatives will, will minimize the drop of the IPM by 16% approximately. So it is something that we're looking to always uh, keep in our mind in our production planning um, for each game. And we're doing that, and this is really um, focusing mainly on supersonic, hyper-casual, the creative team. We're doing all of that um, that I've mentioned up until now with using two different uh, creative types. 
mainly, uh, these are the main creative types that I think in hyper casual, the most important ones. Um, so first of all, of course, the playables that we're talking about today, um, short interaction and like a kind of a mini game uh, to provide the user some understanding of what is he going to install to his device. Um, the playable are being used mostly on the SDK networks and less on the social networks and, and video, which is the biggest part of production uh, because the social networks are mainly um, uh, working with the videos. This is the most of the time, the best performing uh, type of creative on the social um, on the social in, in general. And to test a game at the beginning, you will do it with videos. So these are the two uh, main focuses that we are doing. And in general, we are trying to really treat the creatives like you treat your game, okay? Um, it's super important because as I said, it's, it's just uh, the, it cannot go alone. You cannot just create a game, but uh, neglect the part of the creatives while opening campaigns and trying to promote and, and gain uh, new users into your game without thinking about the creatives. Uh, so if in a general process of creative, we have the uh, impression and then the click to the store and an install, with the playable, we have a different experience, okay? We have a full experience between the impression and until the user will reach to the store, we have a whole world of different things that we can measure um, inside a playable. Um, also through Luna, we can also see some of those metrics and really analyze um, those, uh, those metrics to understand um, if my creative is working if something is not going as I expected, or if I see a drop inside the funnel of the creative, if I see a lot of users um, dropping the, the playable in the middle, I will try to understand what is happening and how can I uh, improve it. But also uh, using and, and analyzing those metrics helps us, uh, first of all, create a lot of different variants based on what we want to test and understand um, really what works, what should we focus going forward? How should we uh, change the different variants that we will export now from the Luna um, or other playables really to understand um, uh, how to improve and, and, and put creatives that are attracting and engaging enough the users. And the most effective in ad metrics in hyper casual just some that it to like main three ones is first of all, the engagement, okay? We are looking for engagement rate of users um, in hyper casual, it would usually, the benchmark is around 80% of engagement rate of users that have seen the ad and engaged. Um, experience in hyper casual, we will talk a lot about losing versus winning, okay? We know that in hyper casual, uh, we want to usually um, uh, provide variants that are a bit more harder, uh, losing uh, something that will challenge the user, this usually will uh, provide us uh, better results than, than providing a simple gameplay, a simple level that ends in a few seconds. And the time, okay? We don't have a lot of time to keep the user in the ad. Um, so there are two different uh, types of time that we are uh, measuring. One is the time to engage, okay? We want to see where is our really sweet point um, of, of time to engage of users that uh, have, has the highest probability of to install. And, and in hyper casual, we're seeing that it's a very short time. Uh, you have around two to three seconds uh, to really uh, have the user engaged. After the third second, you will see a major drop in install and probably um, those users, uh, the chances of them to install will just get lower and lower. And the time to complete, okay? We want users in hyper casual to complete the ad between nine to 12 seconds, which is very, very short. Um, and if we see that our funnel is too long and really reaches sometimes the 30 seconds, um, we will want to shorten it if, if we're talking about the hyper casual games. Um, because we, 
as long as the gameplay will continue after the 12 second, we will just see a major drop in installs um, and the probability to install will just drop more and more and your performance will drop. And just to analyze, like uh, when we're taking a playbill and want to analyze its performance, we're putting it in some kind of this funnel analysis and trying to look between the variants, where do we have the drops? Where do we have performance that is better? And, and we need to focus on that. For example, here uh, in this chart to, to look that 91% of the users that lost the game probably continued and installed uh, eventually. I'm uh, not going to drill down too much into this, but this is like how the funnel looks like when we put it into charts and, and really analyze it. And our goal all the time is to find the sweet spot, as I said. So to find the sweet spot, we have the benchmarks of the hyper casual. We know that these are the benchmarks, but we will always look independently on each playable, on each game to understand really what is the sweet point at that uh, specific game compared to the other creatives and always try to improve and reach to that sweet point. Okay. Um, a little bit about now the playable production itself, as I mentioned. So uh, in Supersonic and the creative team, we are working in two different ways. Today, we're here to focus really on uh, our success stories uh, using Luna. Um, but there's also, I would like to, to emphasize the, the differences between using Luna with our in-house team and uh, compared to our also in-house team that builds uh, playable HTML playables from scratch, okay, um, not using any platform. But in Luna as a creative team, we are holding Unity developer and, and a game designer for uh, creating those playables. While in the in-house team, you can see that we need JavaScript developers, a game designer and a graphic designer. Um, because uh, you will, we need to recreate those assets uh, when we work internally in our in-house team. Um, with Luna, we can externalize the production while in the in-house team, we cannot, okay? Um, with Luna, we can provide the game developer we're working with a login and, and he can use Luna platform and create playables by himself um, for, uh, running the campaigns that we will uh, open in Supersonic. Um, but we cannot ask a game developer to build a HTML playable from scratch and send it to us so we can run it. Um, and in uh, Luna, as you know, and as you saw uh, in the session with Misha, um, you don't need any assets. You have the access to all the assets from uh, the Unity project. While in the in-house, we do require uh, assets, okay, and uh, we need to sometimes recreate them, uh, which adds just time to the production, uh, but it's something that is, is possible, but just adds some time. So go to uh, the successes stories that we had uh, recently with Luna and the playables. Um, and the first one I would like to talk about, we'll talk about two different games. The first one would be Invincible Hero. Um, Invincible Hero is not a typical hyper-casual game. Um, it's a really a great game to use also Luna. Uh, and you'll see it uh, in the last slide, we'll compare the two games um, where you have a more complex art, complex uh, gameplay, complex mechanism. Luna was the best solution uh, we had to use for this game to export an amazing, amazing playable that really made this game um, successful eventually. Um, you can see here a graph from App Annie of installs for the game. Uh, it was running on quite a low scale. And once we uh, basically created the, the Luna Playable and it went live on the campaigns, you can see here a crazy um, uh, spike here. Uh, this is the first Playable that we created uh, with Luna for the game. Um, we created a few more here. You can see like smaller spikes here, um, but this was also a very successful one. The fourth Playable we did in Luna 
for this game, and I will soon uh, talk about it, um, was really having a, also a high uh, spike here that w maintained for a few weeks here, which is also a successful thing to see because sometimes you see a, a spike and a drop very quickly um, because of different things that can affect it, especially data science of different uh, um, platforms and media sources. But here you can see that it was really a successful one. And with Invincible Hero, what's interesting really is, is the, the ability that we had through Luna to change and, and create different variables in a super simple and, and uh, easy way. Um, is really what helped us to, to have uh, uh, the successor and find really uh, until, and find the best performing creative. Okay, so you can see here different uh, themes. It's, uh, it's not that laggy, by the way. It's just uh, I tried to create a very simple view here. Um, it's very smooth uh, as a playable. I just want you to see that the, this, uh, the, the left on the top is, is the first playable that we created that really performed uh, for a while, um, had the best performance. It's showing exactly what you have in the game. This is like the main character um, that you start with to play the game. It's kind of a short playable, okay? And a drive IPM of like 17 and a half. Um, the second one uh, on, the, on the right top um, is uh, actually, it looks quite similar. It's a little bit longer. So you can see what happened to the IPM. It dropped a little bit, but it still performed well. Okay, it drove uh, a nice amount of installs. And then at the fourth playable where you saw this spike that we, that we whoops, spoke about here, uh, the fourth playable here, um, we created this last uh, uh, version uh, and you can see that the character has been switched to a woman. Uh, this woman doesn't exist in the game. And, uh, and uh, we were cooperating with the game developer to really add it and have it in the Unity project. And with really a simple two days of production, uh, we were able to export this uh, uh, variation and, and version of playable with the woman character. And you can see that eventually it was driving the highest IPM, which this is the most important thing we're looking for when we are changing and trying new creatives to challenge and to increase our IPM all the time. Um, and, and, and I think that this is a really great example. On the way, we had a lot of different variables that we, we tested. And this is really what uh, uh, the biggest benefit in the Luna platform is the ability to switch themes, switch anything that you want inside um, inside the, the Unity and exporting it to a playable um, is really easy. It helps us shortening the time of the production and widening the, the variety of creatives that we're testing. Uh, so you can see different themes that we have changed here and tested. They didn't perform that well, but anyway, you have to test it to see um, and, and challenge your creatives all the time. Uh, so this is really uh, a lot of things. We are usually doing those things uh, with uh, Luna because it's super easy and, uh, and helpful in terms of production time. And just a little bit of numbers of how successful this was. Uh, so you can see that uh, the red uh, columns here are the Luna playable that went live. Once it went live, it actually just took all, it boosted the game um, and made the game a successful game. Up until that point, we didn't really scale that much with the game. Uh, but once the Luna playable went live, then you can see a really big boost here. It kind of kind of aligns with the graph that you've seen uh, with Apani, which makes sense. Um, but still, it's really nice to see how what's the portion of of, of all those installs uh, for a specific uh, playable. And here, Luna playable really uh, made this game uh, very successful. Um, and here, oh, sorry, going back, the, the gray part is really the IPM. So you can see the IPM scaling, okay, from what we had from the beginning, um, which this is a very important part. 
And here, what's interesting, it's the same graph. It's just showing you the drop in CPI, uh, which this is also the combination that we're looking for. Dropping the CPI will allow us to, to increase the profit and, uh, and achieve better, better scale um, if the IPM is increasing. So this, this is really what happened here and, and was really great and helped the game. Um, and eventually you can see that this is the Luna playable share of voice. So what was the share of it from all the installs was above 60% in the hype when we were like really in the, in the beginning of, of uh, publishing this game uh, and, and maintained it on the 50, around the 50, 60%, which is a really amazing amount uh, of, of uh, share for a single playable. And, and it just makes it uh, very successful as a creative. Last one, very short one is gonna be uh, the case study about Emoji Puzzle, another game that uh, more simple game um, that we used Luna uh, to build uh, the playables. Um, you can see that this was really a top chart game. It reached uh, number one on Android iOS uh, was a really successful, really high volumes, talking about millions and millions of downloads. Um, and here, the same graphs as you saw. So Luna Playable is the blue uh, columns right here. Um, and you can see that it is significant uh, in, in the share that we're seeing. It is affecting the IPM, which starts to increase from the moment that the Playable went live. And you can see here the CPI that is dropping once the playable goes live. So we're achieving here the performance goals that we uh, are trying to achieve uh, while uh, creating new creatives. Um, and, and this uh, playable also has been showing above 60% of the uh, share of voice um, as a creative. So, so this is really a really big uh, achievement and, uh, and uh, making it a very successful playable uh, for this game. And just a little bit about like comparing between them in terms of production, because we've seen here two different, like very different games. Invincible Hero and Emoji Puzzle are a very different game. And, and I think that it's also interesting to see that the platform and Luna are, are able to really create success stories in any game that you, uh, build and and uh, and that you're using Luna to build the creatives for, and there are things that um, uh, that will help you more and at some parts and and uh, at others. Um, but just in, to summarize, like the production that we had um, in in Luna and creating those playables. So emoji, uh, just uh, in the numbers, we did five versions of a playable with. Uh, a total of 30 variables, which is around like six per playable, okay? And the average production days per playable was four days, which is really a short amount of time. We also had some versions that uh, required two days of development only. Um, and this is really uh, because we're talking about a very simple game. Uh, the mechanism is not very hard. The, the art and... and um, and assets there are not uh, complex in terms of like animations and stuff like that. Comparing to Invincible Hero, which is a bit more heavy um, in a different game than Emoji Puzzle, uh, here we did four versions of a playable with a total of 20 variables. And you can see here that um, the production uh, days is around uh, six days, okay? We had some versions that we needed eight and nine days uh, to work on them and some that we we had less so so as long as the developer is working uh, uh, on the unity project and already knowing it so of course the production uh, will decrease uh, but still it required more time uh, to work on it as it has more complex art and mechanism uh, but both of them brought eventually um, uh, success stories for both of the games um, really uh, were a key creative for those games to, to make them successful, to reach to the top charts, to really be uh, something that uh, um, is, is uh, uh, valuable for a Supersonic and for the game developers itself that has built them. 
Thank you. Um, I hope uh, everyone uh, are still with me. Um, and um, and uh, if you have any questions, then feel free. Yeah, great, great. Thanks. This was amazing, Karin. Uh, I see we have no questions and I want to remind our attendees, uh, your questions are highly welcome. Uh, in our chat and your requests. We are waiting right now. Uh, I think our attendees uh, will use your approach and your analytics um, and also create unique games. And uh, I hope they go to the top on Apple Store and Google Play. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Same as emoji game. Uh, <laughs> okay, we have we have um, nice reactions in our chat. Nice job, and uh, we are waiting for a few seconds. Okay, great, great. Thanks, Karen. Great. Thanks all our speakers and experts for today's time. Um, our webinar is coming to the end, but um, I don't say you game over. Uh, I say you you win this game because today you have got unique knowledge and uh, unique skills. Uh, I want to remind you that you can repeat the step-by-step -step tutorial by Michael and uh, form your skill in game development and in using Luna Playable plugin. And uh, also we will send you uh, additional materials in tomorrow uh, with uh, useful information from Supersonic Studio and uh, Luna Labs. Um, and uh, see you next time. Um, I hope our webinar will be, will, uh, was, was useful for you. And uh, we are going to continue our sessions with our partners and clients. Uh, see you next time. You can. Uh, oh, Aaron, we have uh, one more question from Decaster. Uh, is it possible to see the playground dashboard, uh, the dashboard to change variables? Uh, could you answer for this question? Yeah. Um, so uh, I can repeat. Do, do you understand this question, uh, or I can repeat this? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, definitely in, in Luna Playground dashboard, you can see all the different variables that you have built um, and their metrics. Uh, you can also see the engagement rate and, and really um, the, the time uh, to complete. Um, and there you can see it. I think just we don't have time to show it right now. I, or Neil, if you have um, something in Nile. So um, yeah, I mean, the, the good news is anyone can sign up for a free trial. And if you sign up for a free trial, we have a sample game in Playground with variables that you can edit. So you don't need to use the plugin to get started using Playground. So um, yeah, I'd go ahead to, to LunaLabs.io and just click that trial button and uh, you, can, you can see it for yourself. Yeah. The dashboard is very intuitive. It's really easy. Um, so uh, I really recommend going there and seeing it and all the data is, is shown there. Uh, great, thanks for your explanation. Uh, I see we have no questions. And great thanks to you guys for your expertise today and for sharing the knowledge and your experience. Um, I want to remind that we will send you the post-training email with additional materials and we will be grateful for your feedback uh, tomorrow or, or later. And um, thank you for your time and uh, for participation in our webinar and great thanks for all our speakers, Nile, Karen, Mike, great thanks. And, uh, Please follow InnoVex on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and also please follow Luna Labs and Supersonic. Thank you for your attention and uh, see you later. Goodbye. See you.